like that was just a big moment for us. Like we were on tour. We had a billboard out here in our city. Like so like they're hearing our name and what we're doing and then now they're seeing our faces up on like billboard, like you know what I'm saying? Town Young Street, cause like we used to go there all the time, like me, my me, Arnold, even like T B and his kid. Like I always I remember taking trips with all of my my, my homies that passed away just to Young Street. Hello, gang, yeah? Drip too much on the old women fam of the young sauce fam, she's gonna get overwhelmed. Go. Oh my god! <laughs> Heartache and unimaginable grief from the mother of a young Toronto rapper killed in a brazen shooting on Queen West Saturday evening. Hey, what's up guys? Now we gotta talk about the sad story of Smoke Dog. Now 21 year old Javante Smart, or better known as Smoke Dog, is a Toronto rapper from the Regent Park area. A neighborhood that was the first and oldest projects built in Canada, but was notorious for being a rough and crime ridden area. Recently it even got worse to a point where they had to post bulletin notice within the neighborhood because of innocent people and even kids were being targeted and shot at for no reason. Now in his earlier years, Smoke Dog grew up in a big family of 13 siblings and those are Joanne Smart aka 10k The Truth, Young Smoke, Andrew Douglas, also known as Ace, and Kimani Bent to name a few. Now, the Smart family was well known in being very low key as well as talented, but I managed to find that at an early age, Smoke Dog took a shot at acting at just 14 years old, which later transpired in becoming a very successful rapper. While 10K back in the day was a well known hooper in the city with lots of potential, but later on involved himself and his brothers in the streets. Young Smoke before rapping was holding down a regular job as a local mechanic later on took on the spot for smoke dog and for kimani bent the younger brother is another talented hooper in the family listing at 6 3 in high school and has unlimited potential of making it to the league now from what i mentioned previously you most likely assume that smoke dog has a perfect life with almost everything going well in his family but unfortunately that wasn't the case as trouble wasn't far away from smoke dog at all even at an early age smoke dog's own father wayne sheldon smart or better known as Duke, was unfortunately more heavily involved in the streets as he had a lot of run-ins with the law and at one point he was reportedly found linked to five separate murders which is unfortunate but before smoke dog would ever touch a mic yet he experienced a tragic loss through his struggle to glory and that was losing his close friend tb now tb or also known as tyson bailey was a 15 year old football athlete who was well known and liked by everyone in his area but unfortunately on january 18 2012 he was shot to death on the 13th floor of 605 Whiteside place what makes this story even crazier was that the killer hid in one of the many units of 605 Whiteside place before toronto police arrived to the scene this methodical move that tb's killer did made toronto police's job in solving the murder of tyson bailey a lot more difficult as unfortunately with not much evidence aside from a grainy camera footage this resulted in his murder to go unsolved around this time this is when smoke dog took his passion in rap a lot more serious which ultimately led smoke dog in dropping his first collaboration track called don't get close freestyle on october 19 2012 which featured rappers like roni and sick after a year later on november 2nd 2013 smoke dog dropped yet another track called you ain't about on youtube but he wasn't only focused on music at the time but decided to join a group called YRN within the neighborhood which later became a defunct group and that's when Halal Gang took over. This group was well known to be involved in the streets as well as documenting many times of retaliatory shootings and internal cleansings of other gangs within Regent Park. But regardless, many of the members were more focused on music as it was their only way out from the street life with other well known members like Moji, Ano, Capo, Puffy L's, and SK to name a few. So everything was going well for Smoke Dog's career as both tracks hit well over 100k views on YouTube easily and gained him a lot of traction. 
This is when he continued to drop another track almost one year later called Still, featuring Arno and Moji on SoundCloud early 2014. This didn't stop Smoke Dog as he dropped yet another track called Gang on April 18, 2014 on YouTube. But in this case, the track Still was the one that gained him a lot of fame as well as recognition in the city. He also received a lot of support from the underground music scene. But unfortunately, another tragic event happened. Smoke Dog's other friend named Yusuf Ali, also known as Ano, was found shot and killed in an alleyway in his own neighborhood of Regent Park. This was just two days later after the track still dropped, which came to a shock for many members of Halal Gang. This including Smoke Dog as well, who was deeply hurt by the tragic news, as Ano was a well-respected individual and loved by many in his neighborhood, so it just didn't make sense. Ano's death was unfortunate because despite of the rumors circulating and mentioning that rival neighborhood Alexandra Park, of who they had a long-standing beef with, claimed to have killed Ano, taunting this very statement years later in the track Halal Me. But that's completely false, as it was merely a deliberate move to promote their new track. As for the real truth, was that Ano and another individual from the bleaker neighborhood had a small dispute. That's when things escalated even further during this heated exchange, and that's when the individual from Bleecker pulled out his gun and shot and killed Ano. Now, with that being said, going back to Smoke Dog and Halal Gang, this ultimately led members of Halal Gang to agree and drop the music video for the track still, in honor of their late friend Ano, since Ano was the one that paid for everything including the studio session for the track. Surprisingly, this was a smart move for Halal Gang and Smoke Dog, as within less than a month, the track gained a million views on YouTube, easily. This is what effectively made it a Toronto summer anthem for many years. There was also another part of the music video that helped gain them a lot of traction and memes being created and that was the famous Chernobyl dance by rapper Moji. Now this move got so popular in the city that everyone started to do the very same dance and later on putting on Instagram and promoting it even further and in some cases even the rapper top 5. Publicly this Moji at one point can be seen doing the Chernobyl dance as well. If this wasn't a product of a viral hit then I can tell you this sensation even even reached to a mainstream media, as arguably the biggest artist of the world, Drake, without a doubt borrowed the very same dance moves in his own music video, Hotline Bling, years later. With Smoke Dog coasting through his success and having the spotlight on him, he managed to secure his first show at the Mod Club, performing the viral hit Still. This was a very big thing for most rappers in the city because Toronto police for many years have been shutting down shows and claiming it was inciting violence. This would eventually trickle down to promoters not booking rappers in the city at all. I only count with like one hand. They don't let me have no shows in the city. Why? Like yeah, I said, I don't, try to yeah, book you and shit like yeah. Just the police shutting everything down. This didn't stop Smoke Dog, as after a successful show in the 6, Smoke Dog dropped yet another viral hit called Trap House on July 2015. This is what officially stamped Smoke Dog's name in the music scene as well as took his rap career to a whole new level. Now, before Trap House hit the internet, there was another name already buzzing in the city, and that was Casper TNG. Now, Casper dropped his own viral track called Doughboy on February 10, 2015, which received a whopping 4.5 million views to this day. I mention this because Casper's neighborhood of Alexandra Park, like I said before, had a long-standing beef with Regent Park which dates back to the 80s and 90s. So there was a lot of animosity, but currently at the time it was not active like that. With some from both sides experienced casualties and bloodshed along the way, it still didn't kick off a whole gang war yet which I will explain further in the video. Around this time, the Toronto music scene was rapidly growing around 2014 to 2016, as well as artists in the city previously struggled to land some recognition. But now, this wasn't the case anymore, as newer and upcoming artists in the underground music scene started to finally receive the support they worked tirelessly for. Artists like Press Up, Books, 3M French, Top 5, Robin Banks to name a few. But for Smoke Dog, he continued to grow and drop tracks consistently throughout the year of 2016, 17, and even 18, racking in millions of views on all his platforms and gaining large amounts of following. He even managed to land himself in interviews with Noisy, 
popular media company and starred in a short documentary called Northside, which I highly recommend checking it out. Now, if that wasn't enough, Smoke Dog went to the UK and dropped a viral freestyle called Fire in the Boot series with Charlie Slot, who's a well known UK radio host who have done countless Fire in the Boots with other famous artists like Pop Smoke, Little Baby, and Drake, to name a few. So, this definitely was a big deal to get his name heard around the world and even in the UK. Now, after creating a lot of buzz in the city and going to the UK to promote his songs and his upcoming studio album, Smoke Dog managed to link with Drake at the same time in Europe for the Boys Meet World Tour and the various opening acts on several tour dates. Now, this itself gave Smoke Dog a lot of exposure that was needed to solidify his name even further in the mainstream media. But after the tour finished and everything else was settling down, that's when Smoke Dog went back to the 6th to celebrate his accomplishments. But unfortunately, there was a lot of jealousy and envy around the corner from the recognition he was getting worldwide. As the story goes, Smoke Dog was chilling in a restaurant with two females. And after they got done, they started to head outside. That's when two mass assailants came around and sticked up Smoke Dog, demanding for his chain. That's when Smoke Dog complied and handed over his chain to the robbers. Now, you're probably wondering why didn't Smoke Dog fight back in this situation, and that was because of two reasons. One reason was because before this event even happened, his older brothers 10K and A strongly advised Smoke Dog not to carry a stick to avoid fucking up his rap career. Another reason is that the streets knew was that Smoke Dog jammed an X Max chain previously, who was also from the same neighborhood as Smoke Dog. So at the end, Smoke Dog decided it wasn't worth the struggle to fight for it and handed over the chain to the assailants. Surprisingly, no one in the public knew about the situation until multiple videos surfaced weeks later, especially on DJ Academic's YouTube page and on social media as well, covering the story of how Smoke Dog's chain got snatched and was going on a greasy neck-to-neck -neck tour. Smoke Dog's chain can be seen on fellow rival rapper from the Alexandra Park neighborhood named Finale Stacks. This event left Smoke Dog in being ridiculed with memes and his ops taunting him for weeks. Things like posting with his chain in pictures to even cameos in two music videos. One named Halal Meat featuring Rolex Hami and Mr. Comfortable. And also in another track called Facts, both combined a whopping 1.6 million views on YouTube. All this through cloud chasing Smoke Dog's name. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that for every action has a reaction and that is the butterfly effect. This event is what kicked off an intense bloodbath in Toronto history with the rise of retaliatory shootings to occur frequently and the murder rate to slowly creep up to records high, much higher than New York's murder rate in 2018. Now Smoke Dog was careful about the situation by keeping it to himself and focusing on music, dropping songs like Papa Perk, Snow, as well as Happen, of which you can visibly see he rocks a much different chain. But this didn't stop rivals from Alexandra Park to continue to clown Smoke Dog all through social media, as now Casper came into the mix and dropped his own songs like All Your Friends Are Dead and Burberry Closet, where you could Clearly can see Casper dissing Smoke Dog's dead friends to his lyrics and rocking Smoke Dog's chain in clear 4K. Now fast forwarding to 2018, after many months of sending shots back and forth on both sides, Casper TNG's house in Alexander Park got shot up in retaliation for disrespecting Smoke Dog's dead friends to his songs and social media. But in this case, it made Casper even more upset as Smoke Dog was continuing to elevate even further and continued to receive major cosigns from people in the music industry industry. This is what led both Casper and K-Money to head out to the neighborhood of Regent Park and fire a couple shots in broad daylight. All this just to prove that they was outside and not hiding from their ops. This is what led on to what we now know as the infamous high speed chase with Toronto police in downtown Toronto. In a surprising chess move by Smoke Dog, exactly two months later after the arrest of K-Money and Casper, Smoke Dog dropped a highly controversial track called Fountain Freestyle where parts of the music video Smoke Dog can be seen taking jabs at Casper and his brother K Money, further taunting him through his lyrics. Another thing that was also shocking at first was that parts of the music video was shot at Casper's neighborhood of Alexandra Park. This was an unexpected move from Smoke Dog as many fans thought it was unnecessary as Smoke Dog was already a well established artist than most rappers in the city at the time. But this move itself would be seen as the start of the downfall for the rapper Smoke Dog. On a hot summer day on June 30, 2018, Smoke Dog decided to head to downtown to Cube Nightclub with a female acquaintance and his friend Ernest Mottoquay. 
also known as Kosi or Coco Prime. Once they reach their destination right by Queen and Peter Street, they headed inside. And once several hours passed by, that's when all three individuals, Mokta, Koba, and the female all headed outside to leave. That's when a tinted dark SUV quickly pulled up to the curb and inside was Abdul Qadir Hunduli, also known as 21 Ni, and a youth beside him named Keishan Jones. That's when Smoke Dog and 21 Ni exchanged a few words. And during the heat of the moment, 21 Ni yelled out five words and that was go get your chain back. This immediately angered Smoke Dog as he was already strapped up reaching for his gun at his hip. But before he could do that, that's when multiple shots were fired at Smoke Dog and two other individuals, leaving them critically injured. 21 Ni and KJ quickly sped off as Toronto police arrived to the scene of the shooting. Unfortunately for Smoke Dog, as within minutes later, succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced deceased. Bystanders nearby can be seen shocked with no words, while others recording Smoke Dog's dead body on the ground, only to post it on social media later on. Bro. That's actually fuck. I want to look at that. I thought he changed it a little bit. He's done so. After many months passed by, Toronto police was able to get a breakthrough in the murder of Smoke Dog and Cobra Prime. Upon investigation, they were able to link 21 Ni and KJ as prime suspects for the murder, though finding them both wasn't an easy task. As 21 Ni and KJ both flew out the city before Toronto police could box them in. But finally, after one year later passed on August 23rd, 2019, that's when 21 Ni was finally arrested by RCMP officers back in Burnaby, BC, almost 4,000 kilometers away from the crime scene back in Toronto, of which he was extradited back and facing additional charges of kidnapping and forcible confinement that he committed in BC while being on the run. As for KJ, he's yet to be caught as he continues to hide and evade police. Rest in peace to those who lost their lives in the story I mentioned, and my condolence goes out to the family and friends of Smoke Dog and Cobra Prime. Hope you liked the video I made. Leave a comment down below of what story I should cover next. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. Candy, anyone? Oh, you behind the camera. Huh? Get your hand in there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we came from nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? Came from nothing.